<sighs> I have a confession to make. After three years, I'm gonna have to say something that I never would have thought of saying before. <sighs> Kaguya-sama is the best rom-com anime ever aired. Sorry Banigo Senpai, you've had your chance, but there's a new king in town. Two years ago, after finishing season 1 of Kaguya-sama, my itch hands picked up the manga and I started reading it. And at that point, I knew that it was going to be inevitable. I tried to run from it, I tried to deny it the best as I could, but I knew that as soon as what was going to be the finale of season 3 aired, Kaguya-sama would cement itself in the anime hall of fame as the king of rom com dethroning Banigo Senpai in the process. Well, in my heart at least. Now of course, for that to happen, I would still have to see how the anime turns out. And I thought to myself, as long as they don't fuck up like the dumpster fire that is seven deadly sins, they should be alright. But boy oh boy, did I not expect it to peak this hard. No. If you've never heard of or watched Kaguya-sama, like, what the fuck are you doing with your life? But anyway, it's a really cute rom-com anime with, you guessed it, romance and comedy. And normally, any anime with the rom-com tag in it, quote-unquote rom-com, it would either be a pure romance anime or a pure comedy anime with teeny tiny bits of, like, the other half sprinkled throughout the show. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, it would never be an actual rom-com anime if that makes sense. But in Kaguya-sama's case, the romance and comedy aspects are like, sad to the max. The show's just really funny and cute and wholesome at the same time. And you know, while still being a romance animes. And I know, really really shocking. Okay, enough fucking around. Let me tell you about why I said what I said and why I stand behind it. Now, firstly, if you are a manga reader like myself, you'll know that for Kaguya-sama, the manga and the anime are like two completely different products. Like, the manga is good by itself, but the anime just takes the manga and elevates it to a whole new level. Like, just look at the scene for example. This is what it looks like in the manga, and this is what it looks like in the anime. Like, whoever's coming up with these ideas, like kudos to them for doing such an exceptional job. Like in comparison, as much as I like Attack on Titan, once I've read the manga, I just couldn't be bothered to watch the anime anymore. Like since I know the plot, there really isn't much that I think they could improve from the manga itself. Like sure, they could have like amazing animations for fight scenes or maybe put some insane voice acting or music on it. But from previous experiences, they really do not stand out that much from the manga itself. And so if I'm being honest, it's just not that much elevated in a sense, I guess. Which is why while I was watching the final season, I was like plus fiving the shit the whole time because I know what happens and it just somehow doesn't interest me anymore. But Kaguya-sama on the other hand, I just couldn't bring myself to do that because the anime adds its own elements to it while still following the script from the manga itself. And trust me when I say this, it is really really different from the manga. Not different in the sense of like different plots and stuff but you get what I mean. It's like watching a completely different product. Anyone who reads the manga knows how different the anime actually is. Like everything from the delivery, to the art, to the animation, to the timing of certain scenes, there is truly no word to describe the show other than perfection. I mean, kudos to the voice actors and voice actresses. They are doing a tremendous job, and the whole team as well. It just feels like A1 and Akasensei both struck a home run in this one. Now, before the finale was aired, it felt like a three-man race between Spike's family, Demon Slayer, and Attack on Titan as to which anime will get the Anime of the Year award. Though the award is bullshit to begin with, but now, after seeing the build-up, the execution, and knowing what's to come, I can very very confidently say that Kaguya-sama is going to and will be the anime of the year. Y'all can quote me, you can clip this shit, do whatever you want, I don't care. But just know that you've heard it here first. Like, don't get me wrong, I like Spike's family, but it is still 
a full tier below what Kaguya Sama is and will be right now. Sure, there may be personal bias involved, but for me, Kaguya Sama is at the absolute peak of 2022 anime, and it's not even close. Like Demon Slayer, Type on Titan, and Spike's Family better step aside now because it's Kaguya Sama's turn to shine. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is coming from someone who has Attack on Titan in their top 10 animes of all time, while also having Demon Slayer as the front runner for some of the major awards. I mean, what can I do about that? There's really not much I can do, can I? But Kaguya Sama's just built different, bro. Like, there's no shot that it should be this good. I mean, I've read the fucking manga, bro. I shouldn't be much more interested in what will transpire. I've even told myself that I won't buy this fucking Kaguya figurines. Like, I shouldn't be that invested in this silly anime, bro. But I was, and that's the beauty of Kaguya-sama, I guess. Like, the reason why I love Banigo Senpai was because of, well, mine, and because I could heavily relate to some of the characters in the show, the show meant a lot to me. But unlike Banigo Senpai, I can't relate to most of the characters in Kaguya-sama. Like, how the fuck am I supposed to relate to the daughter of a billionaire or a chipscape who is a genius at the same time? I'm none of that, but somehow, some way, before I knew it, I was magically invested in them. Like, Shirogan is the guy who you really respect and can't find anything to hate about him. Everything Kaguya does makes my heart go doki doki. Chika and Ishigami are like funny as fuck, and Miko is just. uh. there, I guess. And blending all that together just made me love science again, cause goddamn, do they have good chemistry. And for some reason, to me, it feels like these are the only characters fit to be in the show. And if you replace any one of them, it just wouldn't be the same anymore. Like, it has to be them, and it could only be them. And you know what else they have other than good characters? A good fucking plot! Now, I know I've said this before in previous videos, but the reason why Demon Slayer still isn't on the anime hall of fame for me is because of the plot. Like, take away all the flashy animations and all the good music and swap them out for anything ever. Be honest with yourself, would you still like Demon Slayer now as much as you did before? Truth is, you probably won't. And that's just the harsh reality. Kaguya Sama, however, the plot's like a fucking ninja. Every episode it seems as if there's no plot progression. They aren't confessing to each other, there's no final boss to beat, it looks as if they were just doing the show for comedic purposes, at least that's what I thought at first, and Kaguya-sama and Shogane would just magically end up together in the end, but they just slowly click behind you, and when the time is right, BAM! You get hit by this wave of emotions without even realizing it, and right in the cocoa. I don't know if I've mentioned that I'm quite far ahead in reading the manga, but even then, I know that during the last episode, I'm gonna be in bed, in my pajamas, alone, being like, there we fucking go, took you fucking long enough, while crying my ass off, burning through a whole box of tissues, and shit like that. And how would you know, you might ask? Cause it fucking happened during season 2, like during the Ishigami arc when they talked about this backstory and shit, I cried not once, not twice, but three times, once while reading the manga, second time while watching the anime, and the third while rewatching the fucking scene. Oh my god, I'm the dumbest. <laughs> they somehow managed to make the scene so emotional that I just couldn't hold back my tears, I guess. Like, that was some Anohana level type of shit. And all this is only possible if the plot was great and backed up by the fact that I was emotionally invested in the characters. Because I feel for these characters and wish nothing but the best for them. <laughs> Except for you, Miko. Maybe one day when you start minding your own fucking business, I can start ruling for you. And combining that with a great plot that does the right things at the right time is what makes Kaguya-sama as great as it is. And this whole plot, good characters bullshit that I've been talking about up to now is what I'd like to call the magic of Kaguya-sama. It doesn't matter if you don't like rom-coms. It doesn't matter if you don't like the style of the show. It doesn't matter if you don't like the plot. And it doesn't matter if you don't like the characters. Somehow, some way, they will find a way to drag you into the show. You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. And as soon as you've realized it, you're already invested in it. Because that is the magic of Kaguya-sama. The magic that made me fall in love with the show in the first place. And hopefully, 
you guys will too. See ya.